This is the all new Ubuntu 23.10. The hottest Linux distro of all has come out with a new thrilling update. And this time, we are talking a completely new software store, fully refreshed desktop with a new look, yes, the new GNOME 45, a rocking new kernel under the hood and a lot more. Ubuntu 23.10 Mantic Minotaur is an interim release and Ubuntu interim releases are always exciting because Ubuntu developers try out new things here and all of Ubuntu's innovations are first seen in these releases. And this version is packed with these exciting changes and improvements. I have been playing with the new Ubuntu since its daily build started popping up and I'm excited to share this with you. There are many new things here, so let's do this countdown style. Having a good knowledge of Linux commands and being comfortable using the terminal really broadens what you can do with Linux and what kind of experience you are going to get here. So if you are interested in leveling up your Linux game, definitely check out my course Linux Mastery Express which is the fastest way to learn Linux and start using Linux like a pro. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical user interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the V editor and master shell scripting with real life examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated this course with the top things that will level up your Linux skills the fastest. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux Mastery Express. We are running a massive 45% discount right now, so make use of it. The new Ubuntu brings a brand new app center to Ubuntu. Ubuntu a little time ago had announced Flutter as the choice of technology for building all Ubuntu apps henceforward. And so, we get a brand new software store here created with Flutter. Flutter is a phenomenal framework for building native, cross-platform apps and Ubuntu's parent company Canonical has worked with Google to bring Flutter apps to Linux as well. This is a great move by Ubuntu as Flutter will allow for creation of a vivid set of applications. Flutter is already heavily used on other platforms like Android, iOS and desktop. This is going to let software developers bring their software over to Linux very easily. I firmly believe Flutter will enrich the Linux app ecosystem. The new software store called the App Center now is an upgrade over the old software store. Yeah, this might sound controversial, but I've never agreed with the GNOME software store. It was slow, clanky, didn't provide enough info about what's going on and overall, I've had subpar experience with GNOME software store on multiple distros. Recently, it had gotten better, but I'm over it and the new App Center has all my attention now. The new App Center has a fresh new design, a navigation panel at the left and applications on the right hand side. This design language is very clean here. Even when built using Flutter, this store looks and feels like it belongs here. That Ubuntu feel is definitely there. You can search for apps here, you can directly browse under categories and even check out these curated buckets of software. The experience of using this app center is very good. This store very vigorously pushes snaps. Yeah, 99% of all the apps displayed here are snaps. Even when you get a switcher, this doesn't let you select the Debian packages. While I'm all for snaps, this lack of choice does not get good grades in my books. To install deb packages, you have to search for them in the search and then assign the filter to Debian packages. This is too explicit. I agree that this app center is too new and there's still a long way to go, but this change is something that I and the community want to see sooner. An easy way to switch applications to Debian packages is absolutely needed here. Alright, first impressions of the app center are very good. It comes super polished, it's giving us something modern and the overall experience of using it is decent. But there's still a long way to go so I'm really hopeful for its growth. But it's definitely more responsive and faster than the old software store. The old software store was glitchy and sometimes it never let you know what the heck was going on. The new one is much better in these departments. Love this. Top points for the new app center. Ubuntu 23.10 features the all new GNOME 45. The latest and greatest GNOME makes its way into this release and this brings about many changes. GNOME Desktop is going through a fast paced development since GNOME 40 hit the scene and this series is bringing updates and improvements with every new release. This time around, we are getting a completely refreshed experience. Starting off, GNOME 45 gives us a completely redesigned workspace indicator. Yeah, the old activities button has been replaced with this workspace indicator. First impression, it looks sleek. Using this is very similar to the old activities button. Click on it to open the activities overview and you can scroll on it to switch between workspaces. The added benefit here is that you'll be aware of which workspace you're using currently. I like this change. 
it's visually appealing and also has informative functionality. I mean, tell me you haven't gotten lost in your workspaces. Many desktops like XFC do have indicators to let you know which workspace you're currently working on. Now GNOME has one too and it looks app there as well. But yeah, this can be quite confusing for Linux newcomers. If I was a Linux newcomer, I would have a hard time understanding what icon this is and what it does. It doesn't give out a tooltip on hovering on it as well. But I think once people start using it, it'll start becoming natural. The main thing is, now I'll know which workspace I am in just by looking at it. So that's an improvement. You guys know I'm a big fan of tiling. Ubuntu 23.10 makes me very happy because it comes with an enhanced tiling mechanism. We could already tile windows here by dragging them to the edges and dropping them. Now, you can create up to 4 tiles on the screen by dragging and dropping applications to the 4 corners. There's full flexibility here. When you're working, say you're coding and you want to tile VS Code and the development app. Now, once you drag VS Code and drop it into a tile, the tiling assistant asks you which application you want tiled in the remaining space. This is a phenomenal feature to have. When you tile an app, it's pretty obvious that you want to tile other applications in the free space. Ubuntu now directly asks you which of your running applications you want tiled here. This is so sweet. These new features are made possible by bringing in a popular GNOME extension called Tiling Assistant. These new Tiling Assistant features can be turned off from the desktop settings if you want. But let me tell you, I'm enjoying these. Your apps like the Nautilus File Manager and Settings have received a not so subtle redesign. The file manager has received a full vertical split that separates out the navigation elements and the files and folders. Earlier, this split was up till the title bar, like how it's here in the app center. But now, the divider line goes up all the way and splits the title bar as well. In the settings app too, it's the same. The settings headings are completely split from the toggles. This is a very interesting change in design. I'm gonna say it's a very bold change as well. But both these apps look surprisingly good. There's a modern touch here and the design language feels post-material. I like this very much. It's much cleaner and looks very spectacular. Apart from files and settings, apps like clock, calendar and the text editor have also received polishing touches and look superior now. I'm pretty sure we are going to see similar design trends in other GTK apps. But I think Ubuntu's new Flutter apps will not be able to do this because Flutter apps are wrapped in GTK wrappers or something. I don't quite get it. But if this sticks, they'll figure out a way to do it. Ubuntu 23.10 is powered by the all-powerful Linux 6.5. This is the latest kernel at the moment and has some really cool new things. Firstly, read and write speeds for Linux file systems like ext4, btrfs has been improved with many ingenious code improvements. People using AMD Zen-based computers are set to receive performance boosts with this kernel. There's good news for Intel users as well. Linux 6.5 introduces TPMI technology for Intel processors which is set to improve the processor efficiency. With Linux 6.5, Wi-Fi 7 gets support so that's another step forward. Along with these improvements, many new devices get support and there are also numerous driver updates that bring top-notch support to many devices. Overall, Ubuntu 23.10 comes powered by a new engine that's better than ever before. Earlier versions of Ubuntu provided two kinds of installations. A default installation that gives you full-fledged Ubuntu experience with LibreOffice, media players, few games and all the other essentials installed out of the box. Then. A minimal installation option was introduced which included only the bare essential utilities and a browser. With the 23.10 version, there was an initiative taken to allow only the minimal installation and the users had to install anything and everything they want manually. While this idea would resonate with a small group of elite Ubuntu users, it would be a bad experience for most. So Ubuntu developers, coming to their senses, have brought back the full installation option and they are calling it expanded installation now. Although this option is back, minimal installation is kept as the default. This is a bad, bad move. Now many people are going to end up installing a minimal installation and that's going to give them nothing to work with out of the box. Ubuntu developers, take a tip here. Make the expanded installation the default one and spare headache for many people. Minimal installation is a great option to have and I'm sure few people do use it. I understand, it's the choice it gives. But expanded is the option that most people will end up using. It should have been the default. Moving on to more cheerful news, Ubuntu 23.10 brings us a set of love and fantastic community wallpapers. Ubuntu wallpapers are heavily inspired by Ubuntu's codename, which happens to be Mantic Minotaur this time around, so the wallpaper settings is filled with Minotaur themed entries. I love this. There are a few dynamic wallpapers as well, which change color based on the system theme. 
The pixel art style wallpaper here looks especially good. I don't know why, but I now want a game with this Minotaur as the main character. Ubuntu 23.10 brings support for ZFS installation or the Zettabyte file system, which is a modern alternative for EXT4. As the name suggests, ZFS supports up to a zettabyte of data storage, so this is very suitable for extremely large amounts of data storage. ZFS is also a copy on write system like BTRFS and this ensures high data integrity. ZFS is also significantly less susceptible to data corruption and has support for features like automatic system snapshots. ZFS also has built-in data compression and deduplication resulting in very efficient storage usage. Addition of ZFS in Ubuntu 23.10 is a welcome choice as Ubuntu is extensively used in deployments and ZFS is going to bring compelling advantages here. Ubuntu 23.10 brings beefed up disk encryption in form of trusted platform module or TPM backed encryption. TPM utilizes a special chip on the computer that holds the cryptographic keys to encrypt your hard disk. Using this special technique, a very high degree of security is applied to your data and even if your device is stolen, the data on your computer remains securely inaccessible to malicious actors. TPM backed disk encryption is now available on Ubuntu 23.10 on supported devices. Ubuntu 23.10 brings a completely new style of describing software sources. Although this thing may not be directly related to general users, it's still a point to note. DEB888 format is a more detailed and improved way of listing software sources in the sources file. It's also more clear and exhaustive. While there was nothing really wrong with the old single line of listing sources, the newer way does overcome some shortcomings. Firstly, the new way brings an enabled field which keeps all the details of a software source even while letting it be deactivated. DEB888 is more easily consumable by your computer as well as humans. It avoids duplication as multiple sources for the same package can be defined here. Overall, it's an improvement. While Ubuntu 23.10 doesn't fully implement DEB888 format, the process has begun and maybe it'll be completed with updates down the line. Ubuntu 23.10 brings a set of shiny new packages. Ubuntu interim releases are always loaded with the latest of everything. All your software, utilities, games, everything comes with new versions. This results in a fresh computing experience that's above and beyond what you get on the LTS versions of Ubuntu. Newest of all the GNOME apps, newest Linux kernel, browsers, yeah, it's loaded. We are also getting GCC 13, LLVM 17 and Golang 1.20 here. There you have it folks, 12 things new in the all new Ubuntu 23.10 Mantic Minotaur. This is a super exciting release that teases a new path for the future of Ubuntu. A path powered by Flutter and Snaps. I'm especially excited for Flutter on Ubuntu. I'm looking forward to the next generation of Flutter apps on Linux. I feel this one thing is very optimistic. Alright, if you had fun with the all new Ubuntu 23.10 in this video, definitely consider subscribing to the channel for more Linux content and don't forget to leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out this fantastic distro called NixOS. It's unlike anything you've seen yet, so absolutely don't miss that. Alright, this is the next text, signing out.